yeah, pull some people together. We're live. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but let, me, <laughs> let me let me set it up. No, I was thinking about it because we've had over the last few days quite a few people from New mm. York, New Jersey area. You know. Yeah, and, I've noticed. That. And I and it just I was talking to somebody about. It. I was like, hey, you know, so and so and so and so and so and so. You know, uh, Mary Marianne Savino was on yesterday. Uh, she's, you know, there's a lot of people over there. In fact, that's, that's where, uh, well, whatever you call it, the most, uh, supporters in Sology, that's, that's the area, yeah, the biggest one in the wow. world. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's interesting that I landed here from Australia yeah. and England. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I always seem to be in the places where the healing is, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I told you, I spent a few months there and, and, uh, I didn't know anything about grid work or anything like that, but I but I did know what it did for myself, walking around, uh, you know that hu huge metropolis. I learned to integrate. I learned to to integrate. Is that the right word? I learned to accept or and convert and transform any type of energy. And, and I did it wow. all the time. I, I can remember being on the subway, and you know you hold those rails, those yeah. poles. And yeah, all greasy and everything. <laughs> yeah, and I'd yeah. sit there and I'd see my friend. My friend would like have that sanitizer with him. Oh, <laughs> and he would, and he was, he was high vibrational, you know. And, and yeah. so he'd say, Do you want some? And I did the first time. And then I thought, Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm giving power to germs. Yeah, that's germs, right. You know? That's so right. I, I did that on the subway a lot. I would, I would, uh, because you smell things on the subway. Yeah. <laughs> Step I, it's funny, step like I when I paid for my lunch today and I gave I got the money back, it kind of yeah. occurred to me just for that second that I'm like, how many people have handled this yeah. money? You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. then it didn't bother me. <laughs> I was like, oh That's well. Right. Well, we, I mean, it, it's all the same. God got a substance. It's all the and it's all it toughens same. you up. You know, it toughens yeah. us up. We have to get used yeah. to being around it. Yeah. yeah. Let me say yeah. hi to everybody. We'll roll the show out. Uh, Denise Chadwick, Diane McLaughlin, Stephen Michael Jones from Norway, Katarina Down Moore, Morris Sless. I have no sound nor picture. Uh, <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> you can't hear me, so I can't. Hi, Morris. Uh, <laughs> Maria Nick uh, Dioet, J Jenny Smith, Kelly Hemmer from uh, Jersey. Uh, Jania Gazd is back. Jeanette Allen, D my son, Dante Medina. What's up, bro? Uh, Dan Atkinson, Joseph Delaney, Howdy Duty, Liverpool. So we got Amen. Natalie Gotchi in the house. You know, on one hand, she won um, Australia's Got Talent a few years ago, and that sounds like a crowning achievement. But if you tuned into the last time she was on, and, and if you missed it and you want to watch it, <clears throat> you can find it on YouTube, or you can find it uh, in under photos on my personal page, under albums, and then go to videos, and then it's in chronological order. But the real, the real gift and the real story was her transformation as she was, as she, <laughs> the trappings of success fell on her head and in her life. And she is living proof of, you know, blessings or burdens and burdens or blessings. And, and, and you, like a phoenix, like many of us, you rose from the ashes and here you are living in New York uh, by way of birth in Australia and by way of England, right? Yep. Exactly. exactly and welcome back to the show welcome back thank you thanks for having me absolutely so how you been doing since uh, we talked last a few weeks ago uh everyone's talking mercury retrograde march has been uh fast and furious more fast more furious <laughs> yeah march, uh, of... life life has been i mean i'm getting married tomorrow <laughs> Are you really? I Are am. You really getting married? Yes, congratulations. I'm married. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Excellent. and you know, it's for me this last seven months to. I would say the the change and shift really happened for me in April of 2018, um, because I was. Uh, gosh, how do I even explain this? I. I was in England and I was really feeling like I had a soulmate out there for me. Like I knew that there was someone out there and I just didn't know how to. Now, did, find you know, did you know know the person? Oh, you didn't know. You just had a feeling. I didn't know. Right. I just had a feeling that there was someone out there for me, you know, and I'd been yeah. in so many relationships before that that just didn't work out. And 
Um, for me, it was just really important, like for my songwriting and everything like that. All my songs are about love and breakups and heartache and, you know, pain and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And <laughs> we, were just talk- we were just talking about that on the previous show. <clears throat> we were talking about how basically we're, we're art. Yeah. We're, and, we're, and we were talking about, you know, not, not, um, you know, not uh, resisting anything. And, yeah. and how really it whoa, and he was actually talking about, you know, all this fluffy love and light, love and light, love and light thing. What about the darkness? And I said, Yeah, think about all the incredible masterpieces that have come out from of darkness. the pain of yes. the pain, you know? Yes. You know what I mean? This is like, and this came up in my meditation this morning to actually talk about, which is really interesting that it's come up naturally, you know. And I mean, you, the thing uh, so many things I want to say from last show, like the first thing that when you said to me like that you felt you feel that when you bring someone on your show something happens you know you have an instant connection spiritually with them and you know that did happen to me I did feel a shift definitely a shift um you know like the last maybe three weeks two weeks I've had people just come into my energy and just know what I do like I don't even have to tell them they just feel it it's like the power became bigger and stronger with the energy of the connection. And so that's just one thing. And then the other thing was like, what happened with you at the end? And then we had to finish the show. And I was like, oh my God, I really want to know what was going on. And then, you know, life goes on. <laughs> I, I forgot what happened. So at the end. I'm Something sure happened. like we did the drumming and and the singing oh. and the chanting. And then you said you had something happen and then we couldn't uh, talk yeah. about it because yeah. you know, and that uh, left you know, me hanging and <laughs> uh, I don't remember what it was but I've had these things happen more and more and let me just say this too yeah. we're all stepping in, we're all stepping into this unknown yeah and, and and what I'm understanding more and more and more first through my relationship with Morgan is it created a third energy right the soul of yes. is a golden child it's not ours and none of that it's the energy itself so what I want to say is that's everywhere. That's in your union. That's in your work. That's in your collaborations and, and everyone else's. But that I believe, I don't believe, I know, because it's my universe and I can know what I want. Know <laughs> what I, you want. I, I, I know that what you were describing, it was, it was, and what you were referring to about the connection on the show that I've talked about, it's Sology. It's, yeah. the, it's the energy of Sology. And that's just one name for the for the the same energy that's everywhere and has many many different names right and yeah. uh, and I've heard this a, a lot I've heard this a lot from people um, especially and, and especially as time goes on especially this month it's really ramping up and they're all telling me oh my god I got hit with all these messages and all these friends and and mm. you know they, they book sessions with me and you know and I'm like that that's it you know that's yeah the it kind of just opens up this new like floodgate of or a new portal or something just kind of opens up and I mean so after we did the show I've been still you know continuing my journey and I mean let's go back to April right so um I said gosh I don't know how to say this but I had a sore throat I had a really sore throat and I it was like someone was like choking me and I just couldn't seem to let it go. I couldn't seem to, to, you know, with any of my meditations, I just really didn't know how to shake it. And so that morning I just kind of had enough and I just went out to the garden and I prayed and I wasn't in prayer mode at that stage of my life. I did some chanting and nam yo renge kyo and things like, you know, mantra meditation, but prayer wasn't really in my, in my vocabulary of meditations. And, but for that day I was feeling really desperate because I just wanted to clear my throat. And as I went out um, into the garden, it was sunny and it was a beautiful day. And I just prayed and I, an Archangel Michael came to me. I could feel him, his presence, and I could hear his voice. And so I got a piece of paper and a pen. I started writing down what I could hear and it was a prayer. And so I just wrote it, you know, and mm. and there were affirmations that came with the prayer. And I added my bits in of what I wanted because he said, ask for what you want, right? And so I did. I said, well, I want a soulmate. I said, I want my soulmate now. I said, I'm ready, you know. And so I put that down in the thing and I just gave it all away to Archangel Michael. And for some reason I 
I was so exhausted afterwards, you know, and that evening I went to sleep and um, about four o'clock in the morning, I received a phone call from like a long lost person who I have not spoken to probably for like four years, maybe yeah. more. And he tells me he's a psychic medium, which I didn't know. <laughs> He'd only seen me going live on Facebook and he's like, man, I've seen you going live. He's like, because I, I am a psychic medium as well and I can do readings and all of that, but I stopped doing it because I wanted people to realize that we are creating our own reality. And the more that I gave people answers, the more that I felt like they were being dependent. And I'm like, yeah. no, that's not right. Like we know deep down inside of us what we yeah. want and we are in control of our own reality. So I stopped doing the readings and I thought, you know, I just want to do self-healing. I, I don't want to impose, right? So anyway, back to the to the prayer, I was doing psychic readings at that time and then um, he calls me and he says, oh, you know, you're doing so well. And for me it was just a hobby at that point. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just putting it out there. And um, And he said, you need to go to America. And I said, okay. I said, well, I don't really have the money, money to go, you know. And in that letter, Archangel Michael, I asked for money as well. And um, anyway, he said, well, you've got, and my own place. I asked for three things, my soulmate, yeah. my own place and money, right? So three weeks later, I had money. I found my own place and I found my soulmate. You're and it was me. about was he, no, I'm not kidding. It was about was three he to six weeks. He was in, was he's he, in America. He, no, he, oh, he was you found America. him online. I or? found him. Um, no, he just happens to be my second cousin's husband's <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that took me a little while to get. <laughs> you know, that's that's great. And, and I've heard some people talking about getting that type of uh connection recently. Uh, you know, make a list. You know, uh, that type of thing. And the other thing that strikes me is uh, the thing of the four o'clock in the morning thing. A lot of the stuff that's come to me, uh, you know, in, in my journey, you know, traveling around has been through um, anger. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and I would go out, I would go outside and I'd say, hey, we need to have a, we need to have a freaking talk, have talk you, know? Yeah. you know, and have this come to Jesus meeting. But my experience with, with, with my partner was, was uh three thirty in the morning going through like three or four hours of just you know curled up in a ball fetal position crying yeah. you know calling on Kuan Yin calling on Archangel whoever somebody listened to me and finally yeah. it was a little bit of anger a little bit mm -hmm. of frustration I think and uh and I jumped off the couch and I said I need her now yes you know and one minute later she messaged me Wow. What, just for the first time ever? No, no. I had messaged her, which I never did. I, I, I knew something was there. I just, I didn't know because I, I wasn't that connected to know. I just, when I mean, she was in Australia, for Christ's sake, how the hell am I going to get to her? I didn't have any money. And, and so I saw <laughs> this lady and I sent her a message and I said, uh, would you consider joining the Sology group, which I never have done that before or since. Yeah. And so she wrote back and said, well, tell me about it. And she says about three days went by and I didn't write her back. I think it was like a day and a half. And so she wrote me, she was writing me back <laughs> to tell me, don't worry about it. You know, in other words, you didn't, you didn't respond. So it must not be that important. And I already checked it out. That was her, her, her comment. And, and then I, it just took off from there. I said, Hey, I need to talk to you. She said, Hey, I, I can feel that. And that's how it started. Very similar to yours. It's interesting when we say now, you know, when we say in our prayers and the things that we want. And one of my mentors, because um, after, because I had a mentor before that who was teaching me about spirituality and um, and how to use our hands with energy and you know bringing that in. And he said to me, Natalie, when you pray, when you speak to God, just demand what you want, you know. And I, it took me ages to get the courage to just demand things because I'm yeah. not that demanding person by nature especially not with prayer like I always you know been taught to ask for things but not say well I need it now but when we get that burning desire it's like there's you you it's like everything comes together and you just know you have that it's like that tipping point where you yeah. get to and you're just yeah. like now yeah. you know you've, yeah. you've worked hard you've done the yards you're ready 
you know, and it takes like so Shazam. many. Times. It's Shazam. It's like I'm ready. Now, you know, Slam, I thought bam. I was ready. <laughs> I thought I was ready six years ago. I thought I was ready five years ago. I thought I was yeah. ready four years ago. But ready, 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 and then you're ready. You know, yeah, yeah. so I've written about four songs called "I'm Ready." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I just saw I just uh, said this to on the on the last show, and I had mentioned it the other day. But I had this exchange. I'll go real quick with uh, an ET. You know, with uh, um, wow, a okay. Family. And 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 so I said, "What are you doing here?" And and, and he said, well, "I'm here to assist you with this particular thing. It's not important. I don't need to talk about it." But and then he said, but I'm also observing you. And I and I felt like it was a very universal thing, like they're observing us. And I said, well, what do you what, what's that about? He said, well, you, what you guys are bringing to the table is the ability to take emotion and and to uh, apply it from the heart creatively. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in terms of, of creation, in terms of create, uh, creativity. And, and so that's, I think, what you're talking about. I don't know if the word is demand or command. It's I It may be a I word. It may be a word in between. Yeah, yeah, that's what I I'm saying. It may be, I mean, when you demand something, you're commanding it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when yeah, you're yeah. commanding, you're demanding, you know. But not True. in, like, demanding could be a little bit rude or a little bit, like, disrespectful. Whereas I think command, it's, in the, it's in that space in between yeah. everything in, in this trip. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> in <the flow> <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. That is true. So, 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 uh, so, he, so he was living in New York, and so he and was living in New York. In, and you were I in was England. England, yeah. And so, and so and how did did you meet him online, or did you go to? So like, no, well, I met. So I stayed with my cousin with my family when I got there, mm -hmm. and that next day he actually because I was looking for my own place. So my cousin, who's a female, she she messaged me. She's like, you should meet Ryan because um, he's just moved to Jersey City and he's really good at finding places. He'll help you find a place. And so I, yeah, he messaged me on, on, uh, on Facebook Messenger pretty much like a few days later. And because I was in, everything was happening so quickly for me, before he knew it, I was already there and he didn't know. And so he's like, yeah. what, she's already here and she's yeah. staying with family? Okay, well, I need to go and see her. So he comes to visit me and he takes me and my un uncle and auntie out to um, the exchange where there's the dock and you can see all of New York City. And, you know, so that was where we kind of met. And, and then my computer completely died and wouldn't start working. And I remember this clearly, like I had to surrender because I just finished my website I had all the stuff I needed to be up there for my new spiritual business and I was ready to come to New York and just have my own place and be with my guides and start working this new thing that I've just discovered and my computer breaks down, you know. And I know now looking back that it was like the universe creating this for me to spend more time with Ryan. Like it was just, it's like that's the way that it happened because when my computer broke, like I literally cried. I didn't know what to do. And my uncle came in the room. He's like, Natalie, don't worry. Like Ryan will, will take care of me. And I'm like, really? I'm like, I don't even know this guy, you know. I don't know him. Why, why would he take care of me? Why would he look after my computer? And anyway, the following day he came over and I, I mentioned to him that my computer was broken. And I have this theory like with electronics and computers is that we are really connected to our to the devices that we use. So and if I say anything bad about my computer, it breaks down. It's like it hears me. So I've got to be really nice to my computer. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. I agree you with know, that. You know, you yeah. give it love, like give all your phones and computers love because, yeah, it's it can be very – they they listen. We, we are so in tune. Well, of course. It's all the same It's all the same composition, you know. It's like we're yeah. talking about the thing on the subway. I mean, what's the difference between, you know, the thoughts that you carry forward when you've got your hands on a greasy pole on the subway versus, you know, the thoughts you're throwing forward to a device that you're using. You know, it's either going to work with you or against you, right? It's all energy. So yeah. so anyway, he he comes over and I went to the Mac store first 
Um, and they were going to charge me like seven hundred dollars. They, they didn't even know what was wrong with it, but I knew what was wrong with it because I'd been fixing it myself with the crystals I've got, and I've been charging it up with the energy, like to get it working. But this time, that wouldn't. It didn't work. Like I, I could. I would try everything. I tried chanting to it. I tried everything, and just wasn't working. So I had no choice, and I knew that it had to do with the battery power. There was too much energy coming through the laptop, and so they couldn't figure it out. And I thought, well, if they can't figure it out, I'm not paying them seven hundred dollars. I'm going to take her home and see what the universe brings for me. So I come home. Ryan comes over, and the first thing he said to me, one of the first things he said was, "I I was a I was an Apple staff member or something in a past life." And I thought that was so funny. And and so he, what he did is he went up to the computer and he looked at it. And he went straight to the battery side where it plugs into the power, where the problem was. And I thought, oh, my God, like I didn't even tell him. You know, even mm-hmm. the people at the computer store didn't know to do that, right? Mm-hmm. But he went and he cleaned it. And that's what I would have done, you know, if I knew how to do it. But I didn't. So he, he went and did it. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's reading my mind. It's like we were communicating on, yeah. a, on a different level. And even before that, like my uncle said to me, oh, you eat that food. Oh, Ryan eats that food. Oh, you do that. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan does that. So it was always these like things that were bringing us together. And anyway, um, three months later, we were together and then the rest is history, you know. So, so, <laughs> so, so how long did it take you to figure out that it was him? Like I know there it must took have been me about three months to be honest. Like yeah. I, I kind of knew at the very beginning because when we took a photo on the dock, I sent it to my mom and dad. My mom yeah. and dad are divorced, but you know they're still mom and dad, and they still yeah. treat. You know we're always kids to our parents. And yeah. my mom said to me two questions: How old is he, and what does he do? And I thought, oh, they like him. And it's then my dad mom. asked. The <laughs> And then my dad asked the same question, how old is he and what does he do? Oh, and I'm shit. like, oh, they're getting a vibe, you know, like, every, you know, we're getting a vibe here. Something's going on. And so I kind of kept it in my back pocket and I thought, well, let's just see how this goes and, you know, we'll be friends. And and in the meantime, I ended up finding my own place and it, it was so crazy how this happened. I wrote a song about Bitcoin uh, mm-hmm. when I was in England and that's a whole nother story, but um, it, it's, you know how songs just kind of come to you and mm. when there's a strong message, things just come at you. You know, it's like the same mm. message and it, if it's on Facebook or if it comes on Twitter or then you meet somebody and they're having a conversation and then the radio comes on and then they're having the conversation. It was like mm. kind of like that. And then I met somebody who told me about Bitcoin and they were kind of educating me about it. And they introduced me to this uh, guy called Tony Vase who talks on a podcast about Bitcoin. He does education on Bitcoin, which is Mm. different to the other cryptocurrency people that I found online. He was, I was able to understand Bitcoin the way he talked about it. It wasn't so like techie or complicated. And so I was able to write this song and I got it produced um, with a friend. We worked on it together and I messaged Tony Um, And I just said to him, you know, you're awesome. You've got a great show. Thank you for your education. Like you give so much. And he was in New York at the exact day that I arrived. And so I went to meet him a a couple of days, a week later or something. And I was going to look at some places in Harlem and I told him about this place. And he's like, oh, no. He said, don't get that place. He said, just stay at my place. He said, I'm leaving for three months. You can house sit my house. Wow. And I was just like, okay. You know? <laughs> and I, it's right. kind of like everything was just falling into place. The more I connected to my guides, the more mm-hmm. I was in tune with what was around me. I mean, this doesn't happen like, it doesn't happen as easily as I'm talking about it. It happens with like ups and downs. Like there's always a low like to the drive. Ebb and flow, like an ebb and flow. Yes. It's more you know, of a, you can't. Yeah, like you, you can't have the good without the bad. You can't. It's like yin and yang. It's like we need to drop down and cry. We need to that's, feel those lower vibrations to bring us higher. You know. That's why. The, that's why those moments of now. That's that's why they work because you 
you go down, yes. <laughs> you go down into the abyss and you're like, enough yeah. of this shit. <laughs> I need it now. Right? Think about how the planets align with each other. Think about why we're in Mercury retrograde right now. I mean, we need to go through these periods with yeah. the planets as well. I mean, storms and oh, there's so many stories I got about storms. <laughs> but um Oh, I'm digressing. So anyway, I get to the place. The be- it's a beautiful apartment. I mean, it's like a three-story apartment in Staten Island. I mean, I don't know if Tony Vase minds me telling this story, but um, he it was beautiful. And so I invited Ryan over for dinner um, just to say thank you because he lent me his laptop. He lent me his la- and it was like a better version of mine. <laughs> it was a MacBook Pro. You invited him over for dinner and you I didn't did. know there was anything going on. No. (laughs) Your higher self is really cool. Kept you in the dark. (laughs) It did. And I was going through some deep healing at that time, so which I didn't realize. Um, So during the time when I was in that home, part of my intention was to heal my sacral chakra because I was having a lot of difficulties around that area of my body. And um, it just so happened that I met a healer while I was in Staten Island. Um, I mean, I I had a really, really bad night one night. Um, everything was going really well, but then all of a sudden I just couldn't stop crying. And I, I was crying and crying and crying and crying. And I called my mom, you know, and when you call your mom and you're 37 years old, it's like something is wrong when you're in that point, in, in that stage of your life. And I just said to her, like, I'm really sick and tired a feeling like this. I said, every time I get to this point where something good happens and I get to that point where I'm nearly successful and then my body just shuts down. It's like it sabotages itself and it doesn't want me to move. And I said, you know, I just don't get it. And, you know, my mom cheered me up and the next day I just, I did the same thing. I went into that now, like I need to do yeah. something about this. Yeah. And I went for a walk and my intention was to go and just ask people if they wanted any healing, drumming, you know, just to get myself out there. Yeah. Um, but then I ended up meeting a healer who said to me straight off the bat, she didn't know me from a bar of soap. She looked at me and she said, you've got a good energy, but you need healing. Yeah. And it was really hard for me to admit it to be honest, I actually didn't want to believe it. Like I thought, well, I'm a healer. I can heal myself. Like I don't need other people. But she just, she read me. She just read, she was undeniable. And so when I went to see her, she knew she was so good. She just read me like a book and I couldn't hide it anymore. Tears were coming out. And she said to me, you need to clear your root chakra. Like there's some something in there that needs to just be pulled out and I said to her like where does this where is this coming from you know because it's like a force that I just can't heal myself Mm -hmm. it was like I had demons around me or something Mm -hmm. you know and I didn't really know about what demons were at this point and so she explained to me about demons and about how you know they can come into like bloodlines of a family you know this can be something that can happen from my mum's side of the family or you know past from generations and she said do you feel that it's that and I said yes I do to be honest I said I feel like it's been passed on and I feel like I'm the one that needs to heal this you know And she said, you you are. She said, you're absolutely spot on. You are. And she said, and this is why we've met at this point. Now, she's quite a big Christian woman. So she believes in prayer, you know, big time. Yeah. And she works with like 17 superiors and in her church and they pray every night. Like it's, I'd never been introduced to that before, you know. So for me, it was all just like, whoa, this is like another level. You know, this yeah. is another level of of spirituality I've never seen and she lights candles and she does all sorts of things so um I worked with her and I did a three-week cleanse on my own and I also worked with her to cleanse my root chakra and it took exactly three months from when I got wow. there yeah wow and that's that's a, yeah. that's, that's a, yeah yeah that's- and during yeah during that time that's when I got the gift from the drum. That's when I got that voice coming through. That's when I what got did, that. What about when did when did Ryan come to dinner? Was so it- he came to dinner before I met her. Okay. So 
he came to know before I met her and we decided like, cause we were hanging out a lot. We were just friends and we were yeah. hanging out a lot. And he said to me, like, I'm, he said to basically when he left that night, I felt like he had something in his stomach, like a parasite because I could mm -hmm. feel it. Yeah. And I said, to, I called him and I said, do you mind if I clear it for you? You know, I just need your permission and I can clear it for you. So I did. He said, yes. And then the next day he texted me and he said his stomach felt a lot better. And I was like, okay, that's good. And then that kind of moved the conversation. We kept talking more and I wrote a blog about him and I called him Tommy and I called myself Katie because I didn't want people to know about no. what was going on. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and in my blog, I wrote, you know, attractive Tommy, like attractive guy. Oh, so it kind of like gave him the door to open and say, oh, she finds me attractive. You know, yeah. I'm going to ask her, you know, if she wants to have a relationship with me. But we were on completely different paths according to him you know he said to me you know you're on that path you're going back to Australia I'm here he's like but I'm really attracted to you and then yeah. he said well why don't we just have like an open relationship and I thought well that kind of works because I'm focusing on myself I'm doing my healing it means I don't need to commit to another person and we can still be intimate with each other and you know so he and so he so he he from the blog said, I'd like to have a relationship with you. From the blog. <laughs> well, I mean, for, yeah, I mean, that was like the. Yeah, he read the blog. Yeah. 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 And yeah, so we said that we, we said, yes, we agreed to do that. But I was still going through my healing. So I asked yeah. my healer, like, you know, I said, <clears throat> I said, is it okay if I like sleep with this guy? And she said, look, she said, you need to have a connection with him. She said, do yeah. you feel a connection with him? And I said, yes. I said, I really do. And she said, well, then yes, you can do it. Like try it, see how you go. Because for me, I'd made the choice not to be with anybody because I wanted to just look after my own energy and heal that. Because before that, I had yeah. um, some issues, like which I'll tell you another time. But yeah, that's, no, I totally, that's, I, yeah. I, I totally get that. And there's three yeah. things that pop up. There's three things, and I and I do these interject these things for for everybody just to yeah. Uh, one is it, 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 the first thing that struck me is the night I told you about when I got the message from Morgan and I called. I need it now. I need her now. Yeah. I the agony that I was having, <laughs> the agony for hours, the tears and the in the oh my god, my body was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Was was sacral and root. It was, yeah. And it was yeah. it was probably the most it was probably the deepest uh pain and suffering that, that I ever felt in my life. And uh and then the second thing is many people, and I'm not big on labels, but many people that identify let me say, there's a lot of people that say they're blue rays or star seeds and they and they came to they came to heal the family lineage, like you're talking about, like you knew Yes. That, yes that was the case yeah yeah so, yeah yeah and so during that time um the first time we were intimate together it was like heaven on earth it was the most beautiful thing i'd ever experienced in my entire life but then a few times after when we were together uh it wasn't the same it yeah. was like this negativity came in yeah and we talked about it we sat down and we actually talked about it i invited him over for dinner again and i told him everything that i was going through like really personal stuff and he said he felt it too i didn't tell him i was going through this healing and stuff like this was more personal to me i told him a little bit but i didn't tell him completely what i was going through because i didn't really know myself at that point so anyway i had to tell him that we had to stop doing it until yeah. I healed myself yeah and you know bless his heart he came back to me and he was my friend yeah and that means more to me than anything in the world because you know he still saw me and he still spoke to me and treated me exactly the same yeah. if not better and you know the, in the, that time the, yeah and the you know, he didn't the even yeah, yeah he didn't even try he never asked he never he just totally respected me yeah you know, and, you uh, know that, that was the third thing that that had come up, and I forgot was so so Morgan, and and I, 
individually, you know, uh, at the point that we met, had already said the same thing that you said, that we were not wow. going to sleep with anyone ever again unless there was, and I went almost four and a half years, and, and I don't know, she had come out of a marriage a few months prior to, um, but I mean, it was like three, four, five years, I don't know. So, and I look at it now because our, our journey through, we've spent 35, 40 weeks together, you know, it'll be permanent when she comes back. Thank God. And, <laughs> Yay! Uh, but <laughs> over three trips and each one of them have had a different level of intimacy. So there's mm -hmm. this, this intimate, this picture of intimacy that we, that we all have. Yeah. Right? And, uh, from the first trip, it was never like that. It was like I put my hand on her back and I watched her chakras have soul gasms. Like, what wow. Is you know, to, <laughs> to the last, to this third trip, you know, and this is one end of the, you know, one, in, one end of the spectrum to the other, to this third trip where she just left three weeks ago, two nights before she left, I'm looking at her back. The masculine in me who's rising and, and, and you know, all this healing's happening. I'm thinking, oh my God, it's about to get jiggy. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then, I, then I look at her back and there's sacred geometry on it and light language no and it's like talking to me and stuff. So uh, I really get what you're saying about the, you know, the old, the old paradigm or the old template or the old 3d or the, 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 whatever the, uh, you know, non-energetic sex. I don't know what you would call it. It, you know, I get that because, because that what you said about the negativity, that's that programming. That's that performance. That's that, you know, that's, yeah. that's all that stuff. And I know that it's all coming together. And, uh, and I look at it now and I think, how do people, how do people come together in this new energy and have intimacy first? You know, uh, I think, and, and I know everyone's a little bit different, but, but you actually pulled it back. Yeah. So you know, I had this saying, uh, you know, Fuck first and then try to be friends. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you, you know, it's be friends and then be intimate because intimate, yeah. it is so sacred, you know. And I think sex has been really, you know, lust and, and all that kind of stuff. It's been driven into us from media. And when we're young, you know, we're kids and we're watching this stuff on TV. It's like pelvic thrusts and you know, all that yeah. stuff that happened with Georgia. Michael Jackson and you know, just yeah. all this stuff. It's like all sexual lust yeah. behavior yeah. that gets put into our subconscious minds. Plus, if you're the person who has been given the negativity from when you're born into the planet, and it's come from generations before, I mean, that is going to attract that yeah. and it's going to build and manifest off that and feed off that. And that's where the root gets dirty. You know, yeah. that's where it gets yeah. dirty. And there's, we are all born with light and dark in us. I mean, that's just natural. And we, when we embrace our darkness in a healthy way, we can only learn that when we clear our chakra system. I mean, the, the root chakra has to be clean. And I didn't know life with a clean root chakra till um, November last year. I don't think, I I don't lived, think many of us, yeah, I don't no. think many of us, you know. And I, I will tell you, that night, the one I was talking about with the sacred geometry and the light language. Yeah. Was that so just recently that that happened? That was three weeks ago, yeah. Wow. Now we had the three, month, the three months that we spent together, as always, we had dimensional experiences daily. I mean, we, we haven't, that's just what happens when we're together. But what happened was, uh, and I, and I told the story about, you know, communicating with the ET telling, telling us that telling me she was there, but telling, I saw him when this was happening, I'm looking at the back and I, and I look over my shoulder in this short gray standing on the bed and I'm like, okay, this is all. What do you like mean really a short cool. gray, like an, ob I, like a, a, an image of a short gray, it's ET. not like a oh okay it was with you ET. on the bed it was it was on the bed i looked because this is all this is all and we've had a lot of experiences occur and uh and so i was like you know okay so that's not going to happen because this is what's happening and i'm getting the messages that you know this is the universe this is divine union you're 
basically downloading through your divine feminine. You know, the source is sending it to the divine feminine to you, you know, because she's open to you. And, I, and these powerful stuff happening. So I wasn't even worried about, you know, the traditional, you know, happy ending. I wasn't even thinking about that. It was like. Yeah, you were so day, in right? the moment. Yeah. yeah. So I look over and he's in the, and we'd had a couple of encounters with him previous two or three days when we took walks out here in the, in the street. And so I looked over and, and what the reason I had told the story before online over the last couple of weeks is because he said, I said, what are you doing here? And I'll tell you what he said first, second, but good the question. Thing he said, yeah, <laughs> <exactly>. <laughs> the second thing he said to me was that, and this is the reason I've been talking about it uh, is he said that we're, we're here observing you because you humans, what you're bringing to the table, to the universal table family is taking your emotions and putting them into your creativity and birthing, right? That's unique in the universe. But the first thing he said to me was, I'm here to assist you. You right. as a representation of masculine energy, I'm here to clean out the final part of your blockages of whatever you want to call it, shadows, whatever in your root. I'm here to, to assist in that. Wow. So I think, you know, and, and, you know, and there's been a lot of talk about, it, especially last year about clearing the root, but I mean, this stuff has gone deep. And even this thing that happened with leaving Neverland, mm. you know, uh, Morgan oh, and I, she, really, or she pointed out to me, but and I, and I think Oprah did a piece on it. I've and, seen and it. Really the, I've, I had to watch it. I had yeah, to. The, yeah. Morgan watched it. She said, you got to watch it. And then she watched the one with the Oprah thing. And she said, look, it's not about the story. It's about the fact that we're talking about it. It's about the fact that these two men stepped up and said, this is what I happened know. to me. It's like the masculine me too. Right. Yeah. And then on top of that, it is, it, it is uh, expanding compassion in terms of the reality that, like you said, you brought this shit in with you, you know? So if he did that, what happened to him? I know. And whoever did it to him, what happened to that person, right? Mm. So it goes on and on and on. And, and, and just the fact that it came out, be, like she was saying, because he was so well known, what a better way to, to, to open up people. You know what I mean? It so really, yeah, yeah, it's it really opens up the evil side. Like it shows people this is what evil looks like. It's an illusion on the outside. Everything looks bright and shiny and looks amazing. I mean, he was like the king of pop, right? And he did those things and people still praise him even though he did those things. It's undeniable that he did those things. When you watch the Oprah interview, you can't deny it. You can see how damaged they are and how they've had to work so hard to come out of it. I mean, I went through a very similar experience as a child and I totally, it was the grooming, like exactly the same story, you know, yeah. you can't deny that. So and, you know, and so it's like, this is what's happening. We are being faced with evil things every day. And with these demons, we carry them and we also yeah. have them on the outside, which means that the more of that there is, the more light there is every time, which is yeah. why I am not afraid anymore. You know, yeah. once I cleared that root, I can face those demons with so no much love. Hiding. Yeah. yeah. No and more hiding. You know? No, yeah. exactly. No more hiding. And it's, it's that love that is so strong that when two people come together that are soulmates and they love each other, no matter how how many dark things try to come in, it will never, ever break that That's kind right. of unconditional love. And if we can all work on that, you know, every day of our life and, you know, when, when the sun comes up to the sun goes down, that's a day. That's a, you know, yeah. and then we start again the next day. I that's mean, right. you know, we've got to shower every day um, in a metaphorical way to actually cleanse and it, it doesn't so stop. It doesn't it is stop. What it is. That's right, and and um, yeah, I mean this this is this is huge. It really is. It's huge. You know, t talking about it. You know, I did a I did a video uh, probably a little over a year ago, and I was sitting on um, a friend's couch in Connecticut, 
and I got this transmission. It was a smell. A smell. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. I've done like, I've done like probably 3,000 productions, right? And wow. I've probably had, you know, uh, you know, maybe five or six that like, you know, boom, went 10, 15,000 views, like just, you know, in 24 hours, two days, whatever. But the reason I'm telling you that is because this one did. So I'm sitting on the couch and I smelled this smell and I started to get this transmission. I started to get a memory and I was like, holy shit. And, and, and just because that's the way my higher self has programmed me. I said, I got to, I got to just go live. And now I hadn't even got the whole thing in yet. And I jumped outside in the snow, turned on the live and said, let me tell you what's happening. And, and 15 minutes of tears and, and just saying, look, you know, I remember, I remember hearing a voice saying, come with me. It'll be our secret. I remember, you know, and, and I'm, and I mean, 10, 12, 15,000 people were like, that's. What was it? What the, was it? It was a it was a molestation. It was a right. childhood memory that had come to me about six years earlier in, okay. in when I first woke up, but this one came in full force, right? Wow. And my point is it's not about me and it's not about fifteen thousand. It it's about it's about the uh, speaking it. It's about putting that truth out there. Uh, and this is our deepest, darkest demons, and you're right, they live in us. Yeah. And if we try to say that we're not, they're not in us and say, oh, they're, he's Michael Jackson's this and so-and-so's that. No, it's in all of us as within, so without. And so it's yeah. really, if you think about it, it's a copy. It's a copy of uh, the means, uh, you know, you can do this. The means justifies the end or whatever it is. The end justifies, the end justifies the means. So it's like put on this mask and everybody act like everything's okay, but there's this big dark secret over here. These secrets are our liberation, and it's and it's this is the finality of it. Our liberation, our final full force, hundred percent liberation, is in our in our deepest shadows, which which are sexually related. You know, absolutely. It's, it's sexual energy. So the it's more people that talk about it. The, the more we're going to heal collectively, right? Yeah. Well, it's um, for me, the sexual healing became a big part of what I was doing. So I started a podcast on it. So I did like the whole time I was healing, I did a sexual healing podcast every week. And I spoke very honestly about my experiences and what was happening to me during the healing. And um, I realized during that time, I was also working with other people, um, doing some courses with them and I was getting messages and uh, one of them was coming from the Aboriginals in Australia and it mm. came from um, the Austra Australia being the female um, the female energy of the world is where is is uh, the landmark of Australia is it comes from there and uh, the Aboriginal the Aboriginals know the secret they said to me they know they know the secret. So I needed to meet the elders and I needed to go to back to Australia and, and ask them about, you know, what's going on. And I haven't met them yet, but I, but before I've met somebody who messaged me randomly after I had that message come to me just out of the blue on Facebook, he saw one of my lives and he works with the Aboriginals and he said to me, would you ever like to meet the elders? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like this is just all happening because we are bringing mess – like when we get these messages, they're for a reason and they're, they're to be told. And so when I went back to Australia recently in, in uh, January, I had one of the most amazing experiences. I, um, With one of the students I was working with, uh, he, he was very connected to it and I taught him – the shamanic way to communicate with spirit and the land because he's just got this natural gift. And mm. sometimes all you need is just someone to ignite it, just like with, with me or with you. And um, so we did that together. And uh, I said to him, how would you feel about, you know, because we're talking about the ley lines and yeah. the ley lines are actually song lines. They're actually song lines. That's what the name of them are. They're song lines. And uh, when we went to this uh, sacred space, in uh, in Melbourne, we both it was it was scorching hot. It was so hot. It'd been hot for four days, and it was barely 
it was so hot we were wondering if we should go you know because we're out in the open and everything but we went we put our crystals out I didn't bring the drum I wasn't guided to bring the drum that day I bought my singing bowl and we did a bit of saging and we went straight in and we went right we're going to communicate with the land we're going to find out what it needs to happen right now you know because things were quiet and we needed to open up that's what message we were getting so we communicated with the land i facilitated and he communicated mm. and i was asking the questions i was guided to ask to get the answers he got them straight away and he said that everything was in circles everything that he was getting was in circles and the fire came first so the fire came through cleansed with the fire but it dried out the land and the land's been dry over there for such a long time and he said that what what's happening is that the women were stopped from singing because they used to do gatherings yeah and they got banned by the men in the tribes because there's so many different tribes with different rules and different things that but they all decided that the women weren't going to sing and they weren't going to do gatherings anymore and it it actually suppressed everything yeah. inside these women so there was so much shame and so much guilt and so much and we could feel it and i mm. said to him can you ask them what is it going to take you know to make this better what is it going to mm. take and he said two things he said to bring out the singing and the gatherings yeah into the world and he said and for it to rain and i said well how much rain and he said at least one month's worth of rain mm. and so we prayed for rain and as soon as we did that um we i felt the ancestors come through with this gush of wind it just blew everything like yeah. your prayers like we we can hear you the wind yeah. was saying anyway we said goodbye we did we did what we did and we felt so good about it and we just felt like we knew something was going to happen we didn't know what but we just knew anyway uh about an hour and a half later he calls me and he said you're not going to believe this i said what he said they've just announced an emergency on the news that yeah. they're expecting rain and True. he said one month's rain in 24 hours oh my god and as soon as i got home because it was about half an hour drive to get home it started pouring with rain and it did not stop wow. and it was a record of over a hundred years of rain on that day so the power of one unique and in this case or two more gather you know yeah yeah this, imagine this. if we all did that you know if we we are we can do that we are sure. able. That's, that's that's the thing i mean it's like uh god what a powerful story you know that's just it's so powerful we can you know and so many of us i mean me you know i mean i've had so many divine episodes divine intervention and and still i want to question oh, yeah of course it's, oh yeah but i can walk outside now and that's when you said the wind that's one of the the main things for me I can be in thought, I can have uh, intentional declaration or something or whatever, or me and Morgan might be walking out, you know, down this road over here and we're having a conversation, two or more, right? Two more, we're two more gathered, the power of that. And, and the confirmation of the wind, I, I feel like it's a kiss. Yeah. It's like this, this kiss and it it's, just, and, and, it and it's feels a sound. nice. And yeah. I know, and whenever that happens, I know. You know, yeah. now with us, what would happen is it got to be so uh, high vibrational or whatever, the frequency got so high, we would walk outside. And every time we walked outside over on the edge of this island, all of a sudden, every dog and every rooster in the neighborhood would start barking and, and crowing <laughs> and, and sirens going off. And I'm like, holy crap, you know. But I mean, this is, you're right. This is the power that we have. And we're two or more gathered, like in all the sacred texts. You know, even something like this, especially yeah. when you throw into this vortex, yeah, whatever 65, 70 people, this is it's 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 a common open energy of pure love, pure intention. And 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 uh and, and it's and it's such a we can't even 
we begin to know what we can achieve, but we can be open to it. And I think that's really what the what's happening. Part of what's happening now, especially with the revelations, uh, that the darkness can't overpower us. We can actually level it off. You know, it, it moves into light. It actually transmutates into light. I've seen it with my own eyes. You know, yeah. and. I've seen demons go into aliens, then into angels. Like it's, yeah. you know, within like two seconds. Yeah. And also give me messages of hieroglyphics and Egyptian things. And, yeah. you know, like I've had those. And when I was doing my healings, I remember really feeling deep pains in my body yeah. as well. And it just came out of nowhere. And the more I would bring in the light, the pain would disappear. Yeah. And I, th I think another example of that too is i remember when i first woke up after i uh, was on the streets a couple of years i got my girl my I had my two youngest girls uh, i got them back and oh wow uh, they were like 13 and 14 years old well the older one i always knew even before i knew anything or not that i know anything but knew is in being connected and and uh acknowledging recognizing the non-physical part of us and all that uh, that she was like an old grandmother because when she was a kid, she would see dead people. She would see colors. Wow. And, and she had this I knew she had like this grandmother energy. And so she had this, there was like some bizarre stuff happening, right? And I knew it was re re revolving around her. So I called a friend of mine in Germany and we did healing, right? And it was a beautiful thing, right? But my point is prior to that, I, I had enough confidence in myself. I walked in the room. I felt the energy. I said, get the hell out of here. Boom. And I did it two or three times. And it did. But it yeah. always came back. It always right. came back. So that's when I called my friend. And my friend said, no, 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 no. Here's what we do. And I watched it happen. They sliced her back open, you know, like right on the shoulders, like a cross. Like right? a cross, And all yeah. this black came out. All this like black goo oh came God. out. And then it went up into the light. And where did it come out of? Where did it come out of? It, it came out of the, the like, okay, so like the, the spine being the um, vertical and yeah. the horizontal would be like right across the shoulder blades. Okay. And so her deceased mother showed up. Wow. The lady showed up, the lady, my friend from Germany. And I was actually on the couch downstairs connected and I was watching it. And so once mm. it all happened, I watched the three of them like join hands and just kind of like dance around yeah. this column of light. Yeah. But my point is, is that I was, I was uh, separating myself from this darkness, right? Mm -hmm. I would go in there and say, get out. I've got the power to make you leave. You know, That's I have the right. power of the light. But it came back because I did not accept it in myself. So it took, I lived next door to a cemetery and I would walk out there every night. And it took about two years of me walking out there every night and coming across everything from a reptilian presence to uh, mm. wild animals. And, and, and until one time I just said, you know, I put my arms out and I said, I accept all aspects of dark and light. And I think from that moment, things started to, you know, no more was I disempowered. You know, sometimes I get a little scared if something strong would come in, but, but no more was I disempowered. And I think that's what we're talking about, because when we separate ourselves from, quote unquote, darkness or rapist or this or that or anything mm. that we feel we're not, we're actually disempowering ourselves. You know, yeah, we're actually, we, we, yeah. yeah. Whenever we give something else power, we disempower ourselves. It could be anything, yeah. anything. Yeah. It's like about the, learning like how the, to be in control of yourself, not everybody yeah. else. I mean, control control yes. is, uh, is also an illusion in a way, because we have been brainwashed because we've lived in a in a world where governments control us yeah. or try to control us i should say um yeah. we're always yeah. going to have a piece of us that want to control others because of that yeah. because it's like yeah. this law of attraction thing yeah. and um yeah. it's like that dark energy that just comes through and so learning to control yourself but then letting go of control is like you know, the best thing you can do in your life is, yeah. and, and that, that takes practice too, but you know, it's just, like, uh, yeah. It's like Morgan, Morgan talks about uh, this series of books that she read by this lady who went to live with shamans. I, I okay. don't remember her name. I wish I did, but she talks about the shamanic approach, yeah. which 
she used against she used on me <laughs> she used it on me in the, in, in a, early in our relationship which is basically <laughs> which is well it's basically to sh you know shine light on your shadow it's to challenge okay. you you know yeah. kind of like the cali cali energy you know oh yes that, that, yeah i'm familiar cali, with that cali, cali, yeah was going to yeah. come in and, and you know and because of the deep love is bringing the deepest the deepest love is bringing the deepest darkness you know yeah i mean desires come from that place Absolutely, they, they come from that place and that's that's where it can get confusing for people because they people want to be light and they want to be happy and free but you, you that's an illusion you, 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 you we until we ascend completely yeah we are in a Which human body. We are. No, we're in a human body. I mean, we need to enjoy I ourselves. To <laughs> I'm not ready to see. Everybody's like, hey, man, let the solar flash come. Hey, let's have I, a I, I, I like not. being in a human body, you know, yeah. and I'm happy with being physical. Like, I'm learning that from Ryan. He's teaching me that. I mean, I was up in the clouds every day before I met him. And, yeah. you know, he's teaching me how to be earthy. And yeah. I'm teaching him how to be sky. <laughs> yeah. you know, we just, Opposite we've, to track. Yeah. Right? It's a track. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I do remember what happened. <clears throat> okay. I do remember what happened when you, when you uh, played the drum and we ended the show. Uh, Cause I, I actually was just going, you know, a minute ago I was like, you know, I wonder if she would do something and we could send up a message to help us clear the distortion of sexuality and uh, bring in that darkness front and center so we can bring in the light that corresponds with it, which is, I really think is the balance of what we're lacking. But anyway, I was thinking that and then I remembered or I was shown what happened. So when you were doing that on the last show, like where I'm sitting, you can't see, but where I'm sitting, you're, I would have to say a higher aspect or maybe your higher self popped up right with the, <laughs> it wasn't the same drum you had but it was like a like the, the whatever that is the stick okay and, and in her hand was was it, it was flat though it wasn't it wasn't like a the drum it was just a, like almost like a piece of paper and she had it and she was like holding it right and you had like this uh collar that went up right like, <laughs> wow. a, like a a genie and this it. look on the face and the eyes were the same and this hair thing that was really wild with all this white um like really uh white illuminated i guess like aura but it was it was like a cone wow. shape yeah yeah sounds like my yeah. album cover but yeah <laughs> <laughs> probably probably with the with the uh the you know the congruency with the things that are happening uh like you you uh saying you know you needed to go see the elder aborigines and then somebody calls you and says the same thing these things these connections are coming i think more and more frequently too but yeah so that's what happened that's incredible it happens all the time on the show i swear to god I, I, <laughs> uh marianne savino from uh she's over in harlem she was on yesterday or the day before and i saw her actually turn into just you know that little you know it just happens like did i see that and it was a it was a blue black uh panther face <laughs> with blue wow. eyes wow yeah. <laughs> that's incredible yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. incredible it is it's it's just um i mean i wouldn't want it any other way in my life now i mean i've seen so much healing happen through the power of the spirit yeah, yeah. um it's it, i love it i love doing it because i know it helps people and it only has to be done once or twice. It's not something that people need to come and see me, you know, every week. It's not like therapy. It's like once it's done, it's done. It's like the prayer. You know, you say you want it now, you get it now. That's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and 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 the uh, and the fact that what one of us does, you know, the next day or the next moment, somebody else can do it. You know, somebody else is exposed to that energy or however yes. you want to say it. It's not necessarily instruction, but it's we're in a quantum reality now. So yes. if I carry a certain energy, you pick up on it. And it's almost like we're all merging constantly and we're yes. picking up what we need and moving on. And yes. I think the only thing holding us back is this 
is this five or this frequency of, of limitation you know i'm not good enough or i can't do that and that's it just this conscious chatter it is it is it's shut, you know? what happens like there's like a micro millisecond of a moment that happens that if we're not conscious of something it will enter into us without us knowing and it yeah. could be anything i mean I'll, I'll give you a positive example i mean i i was staying with my grandparents and they watch tv and i can't stand tv i can't listen to it because yeah. i just i'm so open that anything just can come through and i don't want that even if i'm protected to the protection you you know these sounds and vibrations they come through and um there's this song on this ad that kept on coming on and it was a love song. I can't, it was like, what the world needs now yeah. is love, sweet Great love, song. you know? And yeah. so I woke up one morning and I had that song in my head and I'm like, oh my God, I'm creating a loving day and it's a beautiful day. <laughs> anyway, in the <laughs> afternoon, that song came on the television on the ad and I'm like, that is that wasn't me. That was the TV. <laughs> <laughs> cute, right? Oh my god, that's funny. That's funny. You yeah. know, so uh, we are just surrounded yeah. by it. So if but, there's fear and you're reading fear and you're then it's gonna yeah. come. And, and and the crazy thing is, is we're we're and people talk about it all the time, we're embodying, right? We're taking all this stuff up here, like Ryan's showing you, you know. Yeah, you got it all up here, but you're applying it here, and you you love being physical and being human now. Yeah, and uh, you know that's 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 it right there. We actually, it's as simple as well. I'll use the example of your that you gave earlier about your intimacy. Mm. You, you came together, you'd made a, a declaration to yourself, a commitment to yourself. You 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 did everything you had to do to 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 make sure you were going to be okay. It happened. You went a few more times, something wasn't right, and you pulled back. So yeah. energetically, there's no linear. We can do the same thing. These thoughts are still going to come in. So it's not so much what comes in, it's what are you going to go forward with. And if you yeah. say, if you bite on something and you take a few steps with it, you can still pull it back. It's that we came out of an environment that these things were so subtle that they were just ingrained for lifetime and for lifetime and ancestral and the whole nine yards. I think we peeled all that crap back. I think the last part of it is what's really been a pleasure to talk to you about has been this, what we might call the, the deepest root chakra, the, 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 the sexual suppression, the, you know, the ugly secrets in the closet that we don't pull out because we got a mask on our face telling everybody it's okay. Everybody's all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, it's, been awesome talking to you about this that you're the first person i've actually opened up to you talk to about this kind of thing i've written a book about it that i've just literally yeah. just finished um yeah. i came up with well i didn't come up with it i got given this but the seven spiritual laws to a healthy relationship which starts mm. with ourselves and it, it's yeah. understanding is the first one the second one is being honest yeah. the third one is focus the fourth one is how good is my memory right now? Um, the fourth one is so we focus and then we align. Alignment is the fourth one. Yeah. The fifth one is environment. The sixth one, I've missed one, but there's one more. Illusion is the last one. Yeah. And environment's really important. Because if yeah. we're if we're in an environment where we don't feel comfortable, nothing's going yeah. to change, no, you know. No. Um, but if we're not if we're not understanding of it, and if we're not focused on it, if we're not honest with it, if we're not aligned with it, we're not going to know what our environment is. We're not going to know who we're choosing to be in relationships with, and we're not going to understand what relationship we have with ourselves. And even even creating the environment, you know, I learned that from Morgan. You know, we yes. We, we moved around a lot, you know, I mean, we, we, I wasn't stationary for the first two trips in, uh, in someone's house or in a hotel or the cases. And this time, uh, we would go, we, we stayed, I don't know, maybe 10 different places before we, we were found, this place yeah. we found, found a place we could afford and, and have stability. And, uh, so we would go to a, like a condo and they would have like a maid service. Right. 
and she'd say, well, she'd go in there first and she would put everything in order, unpack everything, put everything in the drawers <laughs> and set everything up, you know? And then yeah. when we'd leave, she'd say, I'm going to clean everything. I'm going to wash the sheet. I'm going to do everything yeah. so that whoever walks in here doesn't have to do anything. So I can leave this energy and it will be picked up by somebody else to carry forward. So then when we get here, it's it was the same thing, like creating the space, creating the environment, putting your signature yes. on the environment. I had to change yes. apartments. And the lady told me, uh, well, give me an extra day because I need to clean it. I said, no, 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 I'll clean it. And she said, well, you'll clean. I said, yeah, I, I want to clean it. You want I to want clean to it. Clean. You know what I mean? So I think that's a that's a really big one that I learned from, from her. And you're saying that that's one of the keys. And, and I agree with you. Absolutely. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to uh, do anything. I'm not attached to it. Um, we could even just say something in regard to what we talked about, a, a prayer or affirmation or whatever. I'm yeah. open to it. All so, right. Well, I'll leave. It, I, I'll leave it up. To you. All right. Well, I don't feel guided to drum today, but I do feel guided to uh, share a message. So uh, when I was going through my painful experiences. The one mantra that I said every time it came through when I felt like something attacking because we are all going through a time now where we need to protect ourselves, our energy, our aura, and every time we go into a new space, we need to refresh and reset, you know. And so when you're going through healing or you're going through something and you feel that there is just something not right in you. There's a pain or there's an illness that comes from somewhere and um, and you feel like you're out of control and you can't control it and you feel lost. You can say this mantra, which helped me so much in my, in my, during my deepest, darkest root chakra cleansing. And it was, I am in control. I am finally moving forward you will be destroyed. Mm. And the you will be destroyed it took me a while to get the courage to say it because I didn't want to destroy things. But you're not yeah. destroying anything. You're just protecting yourself. You've got a set of armor. You've got your sword. And you're just like, this is my space. You know, you're setting the boundaries and saying, don't touch me, go away. And there's right. nothing wrong with that. That's right. You know, to get to that point in your life where you're just like, I am in control and I this am moving true. forward and you will be destroyed because there are some things coming in our energy that are not wanted, that we do not need. Yeah. And not everything is light. Not everything is the highest of lights. So knowing your body and understanding it, when something's out of balance, just get rid of it. Know that you're in control of it. And, and yeah. the words that we use, like the words, I can't tell you, like since I've changed my vocabulary to using higher vibrational words, yeah. it makes such a difference. You know, I, when I write my affirmations in the morning, I am writing happy things. I'm thanking the universe for what I've been given and I'm appreciating it. And when I write the dark things, I always balance it out with a positive at the end. So I... I write it to transmutate it. I let it out, face it, and then be in control of it, basically, to understand, well, I'm feeling this, so I'm going to be able to change it if I want to change it. Yeah. Well, that's right. You're our, your own protection to the yeah. point where to the point where we don't even have to think about calling in protection, you know, because – our field is sustains itself. You know, I remember uh, years ago when I woke up, I kept getting this message of, cause I was writing mostly, I was just really writing and don't use negative connotations. And I thought it meant mm, like, I, I know what you're saying. And, mm -hmm. and, and as time's gone on, I realized that you can say something, you know, without having a negative connotation, without having a no or a not or a can't or cannot or whatever, whatever, whatever it may be. You can actually say something and it's not, oh, uh, fluffy love and light. It's not denying anything. It's just how you say it, right? And I think the that's intention. what you're, Yeah, I think that's what With the intention. Yeah. yeah. Even, I even mean, using the 
Yeah. Even using the word destroy your intention. I get what you were saying. You know, I get what yeah, you're like you're not punishing yourself. You're not destroying yourself. You're destroying the entity that is coming into you and attacking you and giving you pain yeah. because that pain wasn't necessarily there five minutes ago. And then all of a sudden it's just come into your body. I mean, that is an attack right there. Yeah. I mean, that is undeniably an attack. So recognizing that also takes a bit of practice. I mean, I realized I woke up this morning and I thought it took me nearly seven years to learn to meditate properly, right? Mm. To, to know that meditation is a part of our daily, our day, like we eat food. And a lot of people in the world don't meditate every day. They don't. And yeah. I don't know how to live without it now that I do it, but not everybody does that. And that's what I'm now encouraging people to try and meditate well not try just do like meditate every day even if it's just for 20 minutes or 15 minutes of silence surround yourself with some light and just be quiet you know get to know your own thoughts uh, a lot of people are scared of listening to their own thoughts you know they they're scared of it i mean there's so much out there there's podcasts out there you can listen to anything at any time and yeah. just fill yourself with information but yeah. the information that we are given we are going to get given regardless we could not yeah. watch anything and turn our tvs and computers off and if there's a message that's going to be sent to you you will get it somehow yeah. Yeah, you're because get it. yeah yeah especially now yes especially now. everything's moving faster so yeah. it's not as difficult now to follow the yellow brick road it's just a matter no. of it's just a matter of uh you know are you going to try to remain separate from anything that presents itself. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? And recognizing what that is and understanding that the world's frequency, because it's rising, if we continue to rise with it and we use words that are at that vibration, then things will be created quicker for ourselves. Yeah. So to, un to recognize, well, if you're walking down the street and you're actually not listening to anything, what are you actually thinking about? Because that thought is going to come into your reality it's going oh, yeah. to come into your words you know yeah. and we've all known this for a long time but the more the frequencies rise the quicker it's either negative or positive you know yeah. zoom, zoom. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. so yeah that's that's perfect. The, yeah perfect perfect it's good catching up with you congratulations on your marriage tomorrow Thank you. I can't and, believe I can, but I can't. Like I'm like, oh my god, it's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, be sure and Thank be you. sure and post some pictures. Be sure and post some pictures and and uh, from from all of us. Tell Ryan congratulations too, and uh, see you again maybe next month. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful yeah, day, and um and yeah, God bless you and to Morgan and. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. And thank you for sharing everything you did with us. Thank you very You're much. You're most welcome. Yeah. We'll see everybody in, uh, I think, two hours.